I believe something happened to you recently, something that involved these three girls. Um, can you can you tell us about that? Um, well, like on Tuesday, I like received a picture that like like my school picture, and it had like some drawings on it that kind of upset me. I drew over the your face and drew a mustache. I drew the double ears and the double tail, and it was my idea to do it. And I put the white out on it and did the scribble. I feel bad because I don't really know you. Now the question is, how are you going to fix it? That if we see something happening happening like this again, that we try and stop it. And because we know what would probably end up happening, like we just wanted to like make sure that your feelings are okay and that we didn't want to hurt them. We never intended on it. I think we want to raise kids and who can work out their problems and work out their differences and learn to coexist instead of just shoving somebody or, or hitting somebody. That, we hear that from the workforce all the time. Kids have to be able to know how to cooperate. I can teach them anything, but they have to know how to get along. Because there's never been a real solution to the problem of student misbehavior, we've embraced a lot of new things when they come down the pike uh, in hopes of finding something that really works. Well, we finally found something that really works. And that's called restorative practices. Both Susan and I were comfortable with kids who got in trouble in school. We often wondered why they behaved like that and how we could help them be more appropriate. They weren't getting what they wanted in life and nobody else was getting what they wanted from them in behavior. So we started an alternative school for juvenile court kids as well as kids who were in trouble in the public schools and we called it the Community Service Foundation. All of a sudden we were working with teenagers who didn't necessarily want to be worked with. And the trick was how are we going to create a setting to make them want to be there and also to make us want to work with them. We've developed a way of expressing what we're about. We call it restorative practices. Restorative practices involves both high control and high support. There are a lot of people in the schools and elsewhere saying we've got to hold kids accountable, we need zero tolerance, but really it's better if you do both. That is, provide lots of support and at the same time confront unacceptable behavior. They have to know that the behavior that they've just done is not acceptable. And then the support comes in where you're there to say, I still care about you as a person, and I know you can change this, I'll help you, but you need to come up with a different way of behaving, because what you're doing now is not okay. You're like cursing Amber, so I think you should apologize to her too. Can you help Ebony no. out when people give her feedback what she's supposed yes, to do? Yes, say oh, thank you. Why are you staring at me like that? Say thank you. Thank you. That's inappropriate. You got to at least be respectful. And, uh, thank you. And all we're asking you to do at this point is two things. To listen and to be respectful. That's all. Can you acknowledge her feedback? Thank you. You're welcome. And I don't want you to think that I'm telling you this because I want to be mean to you or because I don't, I mean, I'm doing it because I care about you and I don't want to see you do the things that I did and make the mistakes that I made. So just try your best. I'll help you out, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. If we can get some of the most impetuous, impulsive, drug abusing kids back on track and behaving with decorum in our setting, then I don't see any reason why public schools can't adapt some of our strategies for their own purposes. The Wachtels entered our lives at a really critical point, almost at a crossroads. Um, that being that we knew there was a population in this building that we were not reaching. So we were looking for a way to embrace that group of students in a way that academically as well as socially would bring them into the fold so they would feel a part of it. But at the same time, continue to have high expectations for them and hold them accountable. Along came the Wachtels and said, we have this 
philosophy that we follow in our alternative schools that we believe would also work in a, in a public school setting. Restorative practices are in absolute agreement with our mission statement because it speaks to more than just an academic profile. It speaks to the manner in which you interact, communicate, develop respect, and ultimately a relationship that can influence an entire building or culture. There's a problem the other day. Mrs. Horn was out. She had expectations for your behavior, both academically, what you were going to produce, and behaviorally, how you would treat the substitutes. And those expectations weren't met. I guess I shouldn't have done that, and I should have tried to stop them, but uh, I was having too much fun, so I didn't. I should have affected the class and, and uh, student teaching. Come on. Well, I think we all need to kind of act like our, uh, like each other's like babysitter, kind of. The students will say it's okay for me to call them on behavior more readily than a student in the past who I would have to write up, send out. They would come back. They're still angry because I sent them away. Blah, blah, blah. I want to do a little bit of a follow-up today to make sure that everything is working the way that I expect it to in the way that I hope each of you expect it will. How did things go today? The friends were just antagonizing both of us, trying to get us to fight again. But as you can see, we both laid off each other. A couple of people, like you said, like friends, were trying to, you know, get the flames up again, like start stuff. And I took your advice and told them, you know, it's over, so, and leave it alone. And they listened to me, and so far, so good. Bringing two students in who have a conflict, you could give them a detention, and you could have a short-term fix for a long-term problem. Ultimately, those students will end up in front of me again for something, probably the same situation. If we could take some time now to, to talk about what the real issue is, what the real problem is, and have them develop a plan for this not happening again, we're number one, going to make a long-term solution to a long-term problem. And number two, we're ultimately going to save time from my end because I won't be seeing these kids over and over again. Like I got in trouble the other day for like disrupting class. And he gave me the, the option of apologizing to the teacher, which I did. I think that I actually got in more trouble in my old school knowing that I would get like suspended <laughs> than I do here. Even though something wrong may have occurred, we try to turn it into a teachable moment. And part of that teachable moment is for them to take responsibility and for us to hold them accountable, but really for them to see the big picture and how they're affecting so many people and why these kind of things aren't acceptable in society or in this building. It was, it was a half day on Thursday. Okay. And um, I just, I, didn't, I don't have any tech. So I just went home after the first period because I didn't have any more classes. Do you know what I mean? I, I know what you mean, yeah. My mom knew about it. Like, she was there when I got home. I just didn't get her to write a note. I know I should have got her to write a note. What, okay, tell me, tell me what you should have done differently. I should have either called home or had my mom write a note. Okay, why? Because you guys need to know where we're at. Like, we can't just be messing around. Because who's responsible for you until the end of the school day? You guys. Bingo. Ultimately, the bottom line in education is student performance. And I believe that the way we approach discipline in school has a large impact on st how students perform academically. People who spend time in this building will tell you that the climate's never been better and that the, the fabric of this, of this building, the culture, is a very positive one. And yet, when you look at the discipline numbers, they've steadily declined. I think what's being restored is the relationship the good feelings between the people. When we screw up or mess up or do something wrong, it doesn't feel good. And I don't like the feeling I have when I make a mistake. I feel badly. And the only way I can restore the good feelings is knowing that I apologized, I made good on it, and that the person I've wronged is OK with me again. Then we've been restored, and also my self-respect has been restored. When we talk to people about restorative practices, we acknowledge that it's not new. Many of them do restorative practices already in their own way. What we suggest to them is that they recognize when they do it and then do it more often, more deliberately, and more creatively. The Palisades Middle School has really made a commitment to bring this full force.
We trained the entire staff, including women that work in the cafeteria, support staff there. We've gone in regularly to give them ongoing support. I feel respected, like, if we get sent to the student office, how they try to get us out of the gym and not just try to, like, get us in trouble. And it helps a lot because it feels like you have a friend in there and it's not like you're just going into a, like, dungeon or something. I'm actually getting along with a lot of people that I used to fight with. Because, like, when you get in trouble with somebody, they try to make you friends. Again, like with the circles, I got to an incident, and I'd say last week, and um, I'm friends with that kid now. Scott and I, we started talking again, and I think that we haven't, like, argued over nothing. We joked around with each other already and everything. I think they should write the letter to you, both of them, saying, um, about about what they what they're gonna do to change. I make a commitment to stop arguing and fight with him and to calm down when it comes to stuff like this. It makes me feel pretty good that I have a good amount of say in what we're gonna do to try and solve the problem. You have to trust the kids. You have to believe that kids will ultimately do the right thing if you give them the tools to do it and you give them the room to do it. Our discipline referrals from classroom situations are way way down almost uh, zero percent. And uh, there's not been one fist fight in the building this year. But I think the true test is if you can grow cultural kids will self-report or report a friend out of concern for their well-being. And that's happening. I think we have more responsibilities and we get to be a part of disciplining ourselves more. So. So it seems as though your plan of, of writing yourself a reminder, because there is um, there is place to do that, that might be a good idea. There's not too many people in the student office because there's no point. It doesn't look cool, it doesn't look, because that's how it was in sixth grade, once you get here and like the bad kid. But now you understand that it doesn't get you anywhere. All it does is start putting you backward when you need to get forward. It just digs you a hole. I guess you could say I'm a veteran of dealing with all different ways of dealing with students. Some of them have been good, some of them have been okay. Dealing with students, uh, facing their difficulties, talking about them in groups, uh, working one-on-one -on -one with them, all of these things have really changed the climate. City Springs Elementary School in inner city Baltimore was eager to bring restorative practices to their school to support their positive discipline policy and to build a stronger school community. Restorative practices is something that blends well with City Springs because we take a positive approach to discipline. So we needed some type of discipline program that would blend well with that philosophy. I want the children to understand why it is they shouldn't do the things that we don't want them to do. and to not do it because they don't want to do it, because they feel in their heart that it's wrong. I, I, I really started to fight. Once the children began to learn it and understand it, they would teach each other. And the behaviors that were difficult began to disappear, and it actually, discipline took less time. We, d we make mistakes and we do outrageous things because we don't think about the impact that they're having on somebody else or how it affects the community. So we need to find a way in the schools to do that, and restorative practices, it seemed to me, offered that opportunity. How's your mother been affected? Because my mother, she worked two jobs, and she uh, don't have any time to uh, come up there and check up on during the mornings or during the afternoon. And they affect my teacher because it'd be hard for them to teach and uh, get that right. So what do you think needs to happen to make things right? I would change my behavior and start talking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of the biggest changes that I saw was with the teachers who incorporated this into their classroom and that it wasn't a tool that was just used when things went wrong, but it was a tool to use to dis have discussions. When we just try to build a family and community within the school to really motivate and encourage the children. Get in our circle. I've had them sort of set goals for themselves, something that they wanted to do better to help the group kind of support each other 
they gave suggestions to each other and they try to encourage each other in class now that they know what each other's goals are. It doesn't matter whether you know you're teaching students at a regular public school in a urban area, suburban area, it doesn't matter who you are, sort of where you are. It's a very useful tool or a way of thinking to really sort of help them build a more positive, collaborative type of school culture. We've brought restorative practices to hundreds of schools throughout our own region, North America, and the world. One of those schools is Springfield Township High School in Pennsylvania. It's easy to say that um, respect is important, everyone needs to have respect, but how do you carry that out when you have, you know, a thousand people in a building, hundreds of thousands of interactions every day? And um, what, what we've tried to do with restorative practices is it puts a, a conceptual framework around, uh, around the ideas of building positive relationships, having respect, and allows a school, I think, to be able to look at things in a different way. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Graham. See everyone, I hope you're doing well today. Uh, as usual, start with the check-in today. So, how are we feeling? Pretty good. Good. Right. Yeah, feeling yeah. really good. Anything going on in your minds? Anything you're worried about, concerned about? The German class gets to go down to uh, the middle school today and teach a seventh grade class on Germany. And we get to have like foods and we teach them about the geography. And Excellent. That's, that's going to be fun. That'll be fun. You ever see yourself as a teacher? I like little kids, but no, I don't see myself as a teacher. <laughs> I learned as an assistant principal at a large, uh, more urban high school, I suspended many, 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 many people. And the students who changed their behavior, it wasn't because they got suspended, it was because they developed a relationship with me. That was great. Congratulations. Most traditional high schools are not designed to be restorative. So you have years and years, decades and decades of traditional discipline. Because that's been the dominant culture, that's what people expect. And so the, the challenge for, um, to change it in a school is to, uh, is to convince people that you can deal restoratively and you're still holding people accountable. Students need to be encountered with diverse ideas, diverse relationships, and all the little things that can go wrong, but also understand that there's a way to solve those problems and there's a way to be successful and can translate the skills that they learn in restorative practices to their everyday life and realize it's not just the four walls of the classroom or the institution where these skills are applicable. We've been working in Hull, one of the most disadvantaged cities in the United Kingdom, to bring about a restorative city. We're training people across all human service disciplines to use restorative practices in their work. And one of the first places that's used restorative practices is Collingwood Primary School, which has accomplished a remarkable transformation. Well, when I first took over the school, nearly three years ago, the school was in special measures, which means that the government had deemed it needing very special attention, at risk really of being closed down because things were so bad. Restorative practices helped us to make it the best it can possibly be. So we'll start off. Jack, would you like to tell us what's been happening? We need to listen um, to Jack. Need a pack of your days. Um, we're, we're playing bumpy card and Alex keeps on telling everyone to come in push Jack and the keep and always coming to me and pushing me. We brought the schools successfully out of special measures using many of the sort of strategies that I've come across with restorative practices. The key and the fundamental part of restorative practices is building this sense of community within a school. Children are living this increasingly disjointed world where their norms and their values are, and the sense of community has been eroded and we have to find a way to build and restore that sort of sense of community within a school because that's what schools are about. We discuss what's happened, who has been affected. The children all have an opportunity to speak, to say how they've been affected, what they were thinking of, and to try and find a solution to sorting it all out. So how did you feel when... when... I had to feel like put down because he had a real good day yesterday. Okay. And he was like spoiler. Right. And and how did it how did it your how did you feel yourself? You said you felt put down. Yeah. Yeah. So it made you feel bad. Yeah. How do you feel about that? The way that what you said has made Josh feel that way. 
I feel upset because I put one of my good mates down. Two years after you come out of special measures, they come back and inspect you again. When they came into the school, they were really impressed with what they'd seen and they judged us to be outstanding, which puts us now in the top 10% of schools in the country. I've had the opportunity to travel to a number of countries and interact with people about restorative practices. It seems that the loss of community and appropriate behavioral boundaries is something that's happening all over the world. En de nieuwe manier die te maken heeft met nadenken en herstellen, proberen het goed te maken. We've been working with some Dutch state schools or public schools and they've been terrific. They've been very courageous and have implemented various kinds of circles and groups and done restorative conferences. And they're working with a very difficult situation in inner city schools in The Hague. We have a lot of nationalities. We have 95% of children who have ch uh, parents uh, who were not born in Holland, in Netherlands. I'm 25 years in education now, working in, in all kinds of schools. And I was always uh, searching for ways to deal with groups, because group influence is a very tough issue for children, how to deal with group pressure and so on. And the restorative practices gave me the, give me the opportunity and tools to deal with that in a, in a very, uh, very good way, with very uh, good results. I don't get, uh, get kicked out so much anymore and I have much stronger relationship with the people around here. When you start talking to a pupil, they are surprised. They are used to be uh, scolded at by uh, adults. Adults tell them what to do. And now they have to think for themselves and find out for themselves what the effects are and how they can affect their own behavior. When you're not getting in trouble and stuff, you'll be able to focus on your grades and it'll help a lot more, like you'll be able to be ready for tests and stuff. Being held accountable for what you do is a good thing. I think this is a program that's so successful that other schools need to, to understand that and get in the bandwagon because it really does work.